So we will have two more uh, talks now, one live and one uh, via the interwebs. So cross our fingers that it works. Um, and then we're going to have a break. So don't worry, a break is coming. So um, I'd like to next uh, welcome, uh, well, actually, let me tell you what we're doing first. We're moving on to a different topic, uh, which is redemption of WIC foods. This is another topic uh, Kathy mentioned this morning is the second piece of today. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Chuani Tong of Old Dominion University. Dr. Tong is an assistant professor of marketing at the Strom College of Business. His research interests include consumer well-being, services marketing, and consumer online communication. As an active researcher on transformative consumer research, he has been conducting research on young adults' financial behavior and financial well-being, as well as on low-income consumers' food consumption. Uh, Dr. Tong will be co-presenting uh, through somewhere, I'll look to the <laughs> technology people, um, with Dr. Harry Zhang, also from Old Dominion University. Um, he is joining us remotely, and maybe he'll tell us where he is when he joins us, because that's always fun, right? Um, Dr. Zhang is an associate professor in the School of Community and Environmental Health. As a health economist, he has an active research agenda on socioeconomic determinants of health among low-income populations and related food assistance programs, such as SNAP and WIC. He has been a principal investigator or co-investigator on multiple grants funded by the National Institutes of Health and USDA. Currently, he's studying how to use state-level WIC EBT data and principles of behavioral economics to improve WIC redemptions in Virginia. Um, and I, I thank him and this team for their collaboration with the Virginia WIC program. That's been a really nice collaboration. So Dr. Tong, you're welcome to come on up. And I think we're all in this together to figure out how Harry's joining us. And cross our fingers, it's going to work. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Yes. OK. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, on behalf of our research team, I want to thank the committee for the invitation. And we are really honored to present here today. Uh, as a marketing and a consumer researcher, so also I'm doing research on consumer well-being, I have to admit that I knew very little about the WIG program one and a half year ago. So my dear colleague, uh, Dr. Harry Zong, invited me to join the research on WIG program uh, in 2014. Since then, I found this area is very fascinating and also inspiring. Uh, however, uh, Due to uh, Dr. Harry Zhang's uh, pre-arranged business trip, uh, he ran out traveling in China. He will not be here uh, in person. But however, uh, I'm happy that he managed to co-present with me today here. So Harry, are you here? Harry? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe we, can, we can give him another try. So. It doesn't work.
Oh, okay. Uh, I think we lost uh, <laughs> the horizon, so I have to step in. Uh, originally, our plan is to we, we will co-present the, the the presentation, but uh, uh, today I think I will uh, do the whole presentation for you guys. So let's move on. It doesn't work. Yeah. The pointer doesn't work. He's turning the web because the audio is too bad. Okay, good. <laughs> I think maybe we need to, I think probably we need to share the screen again. <laughs> oh, quit your sharing. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, no, it's Not fine. Okay. If he can see it. Okay. But this. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. <laughs> We made it. You have to. Why don't you just? I know the problem. Hello. To reshare the screen again, because every time we we move the right. the video here, so we need to reshare the screen again. Reshare. So, yeah, okay, so unshare, reshare. Yeah, yeah, share again. And then, but this they will come back. I think we can we can do the screen. Okay, and if not, you can see the next slide. Do we'll change it. Okay, okay, sure. Okay, Harry, we can see you now. Okay, hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your patience. I mean, you know, it's a late night um, uh, in China, but still, you know, I'm very excited to have the opportunity to present this exciting, you know, kind of talk for the committee. And hopefully, you know, this, this, this work, this information can help uh, the committee make some very important decisions. But before we start, I'd like to acknowledge a few things. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Becker Center and the USDA for the funding support. You know, Twain mentioned a new VEBA week program you know, 18 months ago, and I should say I was not better. Without Becker and the USDA's pilot project funding, we may not have the opportunity to enter the WIC wonderland. And we really thank them to open the door for us you know, for a new world. And the current project just started this January and it's still going on. So the results present here are preliminary and we are happy to hear suggestions from the committee You know how we're gonna improve the research. But very importantly, we should emphasize that every view expressed here uh, out and it should not represent the views from Becker Center, the USDA of Virginia Department of Health. Okay, let's start. Next slide. Now you may ask, you know, why fruit and vegetable redemption? Well, we find the fruit and vegetable redemption is very interesting uh, because it's the uh, first is the only cash value voucher in WIC program. And second, compared to other food category, uh, which may have restrictions on, on like a brand or size, for example, you know, only similar can be redeemed for formula. The fruits and vegetable have the most options to, to choose. You know, theoretically, all fresh fruit and vegetable are eligible to redeem. And because of this, fruit and vegetable has the most number of redemption records. In 2015, uh, we had like 2.7 million records. And more interestingly, we have very little information or knowledge to many important questions about fruit and vegetable redemption. First question, we don't know clearly what kind of fruit and vegetable is redeemed. It's not like a, like a juice redemption, you know, regardless of what kind of like, brands, but at least you know, we know you know, apple juice or orange juice is redeemed. Moreover, we don't know how much you know, cash value voucher is redeemed across different households. And it's, it's the only cash-based food category associated with the redemption in WIC program. When I first heard about the monthly you know, CVV benefits, I was surprised a little bit. Because like an $8 a month child, middle class, family can re uh, redeem you know, or purchase $8 worth of fruit and vegetable easily in one shopping trip. However, some WIC household did not redeem the full benefit, and someone even didn't redeem half of the benefits. So the why question is kind of you know, very, very challenging and uh, interesting for me. Uh, next, next slide. 
To answer this question, we adopted an integrated approach using both quantitative and qualitative studies. For the quantitative approach, we used the Virginia WIC administrative data in 2015, which includes the participants' demographics data and the EBT redemption data. Well, to do the qualitative study, we conduct a focus group and in-depth interviews in three cities in Southeast Virginia. And I will mostly talk about the quantitative part and leave Chuan Yi to talk about the qualitative study. Next slide, please. Okay, we got the data in March and were overwhelmed by the opportunities by how many things we can do from the data. As we mentioned, Fruit Civil Redemption only has over 2.7 million redemption records. It has detailed information on each record. For example, we know which family redeemed the benefits, how much redeemed, how much dollar is spent, and on, on what kind of you know, product produced, and which store was redeemed. But most importantly, the data provides the possibility to understand exactly what kind of fruits and vegetables were redeemed. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, however, it's not easy job. Okay, the data is pretty messy. Since we have to break down a lot of the, 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 what we call the fruit and vegetable codes. First, two types of codes were used in the fruit and vegetable redemption. The first, uh, so the first code most people may have already known, called the UPC code or the barcode for the standard product. Well, this UPC code uh, tells us the brand name is Food Club, the process and method is cut, the specific vegetable is green beans, and the size is 14.5 you know, ounce. But if the produce does not have a UPC code, then um, they use a what we call the price lookup code, called the PLU code, uh, like a 31103 uh, is a, a PLU code for naval oranges. And the national organization, IFPS, actually labels specific product with, with the, the, the four or five digit number PLU code. But the IFS did not use all four or five digits. There are many four or five digit numbers are not assigned. So the trick here is, Virginia WIC program used a 4469 or 44691 as a wild card. What does that mean? Well, any cashier, as long as they punch this wild card, the PLU code, and it can process any fruit and vegetable you know, for the WIC pro, uh, redemption. But the bad news is if we see the code, we don't know exactly what, fruit, what kind of fruit and vegetable is redeemed. So this is kind of the caveat. Next slide, please. Okay, let's just have a quick view about the study population. You know, we have uh, approximately 157,000 households redeemed fruit and vegetables sometime in 2015. Uh, approximately 40% uh, were non-Hispanic uh, non whites, one-third were non-Hispanic black, and 20% were Hispanic. And approximately 47% you know, uh, had only one week participant, um, and the room, um, and approximately half of the WIC uh, household uh, did not have the SNAP benefits. Okay, so b this is just a very uh, kind of g general description of the study population. Next slide. So now we are interested in you know, look at the, the redemption right, by a subcategory. And overall, well, we have like a five categories fresh fruit, uh, fruit and vegetable, canned fruit and vegetable, frozen fruit and vegetable, dried fruit and vegetable, and as we mentioned, the wild card, we call it general fruit and vegetable, because we don't know exactly what kind of uh, fruit and vegetable were redeemed. But look, if you look at the table, overall, 65% of the redemption were for fruit, fresh fruit and vegetable. 8% uh, were for canned fruit and vegetable, 5% were for frozen, but only 0.1% or for dried fruit, right? And we find, um, uh, compared to the, the, the uh, Hispanic households, white and black redeem less fresh fruit and vegetable. And household with only one participant redeem most fr a proportion fresh fruit and vegetable, 69%. And household with SNAP, it seems to redeem almost the same proportion of fresh fruit and vegetable as a household without the SNAP benefits. Next slide. Right. And next slide, please. Right. 
So we're also interested in what kind of, you know, what, what are the popular fruits or vegetables for the Virginia Wake for households. So we just rank the, 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 the top five um, fruits in Virginia Wake program in 2015. And consistently, banana is the number one choice for like uh, the WIC participant in, in Virginia. Apple and the grapes are the number second and the number third, but depend on the different uh, categories, you know, households, they may shift the order. And strawberry is consistently the number four. For the fifth uh, most popular fruits, only for Hispanic households, avocado is an, the fifth popular choice uh, for, the, for the Hispanic household. But for all the other um, households, pineapple. Uh, just, just a reminder, this kind of uh, pop popularity is ranked based on the number of transaction records. Okay, let's go to the next slide, see what are the popular uh, vegetables compared with fruits. Well, the most popular vegetable has more variations. Well, overall, you know, vegetable salad bag actually is the most popular vegetable category followed by corn, onion, tomato, or pepper. But in white uh, households, salad only ranked number third. Right? Actually, corn uh, is, is the number one, the most popular. And Hispanic households choose pepper as the second most popular vegetable, but only ranks corn the number five. But in other categories, you, you just look at the, by the uh, by the number of WIC participants in the in the household or the SNAP benefits receiving or not. The the, the ranking is very uh, similar. Next slide. So we are interested. In what kind of factor right, were driving their choice for fresh fruit and vegetable? And we um, we run the conditional logistic regression, right? and we find minorities were much more likely to choose fresh produce and fresh fruit compared with white participants. Uh, Hispanic participants strongly prefer fresh produce and fruit. And with more uh, weak participants in the household, more likely to, to choose fresh produce, but not necessary fresh fruit. So we have two outcomes. Um, the left panel is fresh, the outcome is fresh fruit and vegetable. And the right panel means if you choose the, um, the, 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 the fresh fruit and vegetable, how likely you choose fresh fruit, okay? And uh, if you look at the SNAP participants, it's very interesting, you know, the, the, for, the, for the fresh fruit and vegetable, the odds ratio is below one, uh, highly significant. But for the fresh fruit, given fresh fruit and vegetable, the, 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 uh, the odds ratio is 1.027, it's over one, and there's also highly significant. What, what does that mean? Uh, well, that means the SNAP benefits actually increase the budget to p purchase fruit and vegetable in general, but the income effect actually, you know, kind of limits the WIC redemption because they have the SNAP benefit to, to, to choose the fresh fruit, but it will affect their choice of the fresh fruit as well. Okay, so, but I, I think, you know, because of the, the limitation of the data, it definitely needs uh, more research to, to, to answer, you know, why we see this kind of pattern. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, the caveat for the analysis is that we only use the redemption transaction record in the, uh, in the previous uh, slides. But now we look at the dollar amount, right? And uh, in general, we find on average, uh, we household only redeemed $8.49, and the redemption rate is uh, 72%, right? which means 72% of the prescribed cash value voucher was redeemed. When we break down by race ethnicity, black households had the lowest redemption rate, only 66.9% compared to, you know, for the white is 7.9, and compared to Hispanic, 78%. Right? With more participants in the household, the redemption rate increased, and the redemption rate for households um, for, with SNAP benefits was a little bit lower than the, the, uh, the WIC household without the SNAP benefits. Okay, next slide. Okay, as we mentioned before, $8 a month 
can be redeemed in one shopping trip for kind of middle income consumer. But why participants do not redeem them all? We use the two cutoff points. Well, first one is not full redemption, which means as long as you have one cent left on the EBD card, we choose it as a positive outcome. So it's a, it's a one in the logistic regression. And then the outcome is counted as under redemption, which is defined as redeeming less than 75% of the prescribed benefits. And we find that black participants were more likely to experience under redemption compared with white participants. However, Hispanic households were more likely to experience not full redemption, but less likely to experience under redemption. What does that mean? Well, that means compared to the white household, Hispanic households were more likely to keep balance on the EBD card. However, much less likely to leave more than 25% of the benefits on the card. And interestingly, if the household had more participants, they were more likely to increase odds of not redeeming the full benefits, but reduce odds of under-redemption. And with SNAP benefits, odds ratio of not full redemption and under-redemption both increase, which means receiving SNAP benefits may make the WIC participant less likely to redeem WIC benefits you know, in fruits and vegetables. Okay, let's just give a, a quick summary of the quantitative results. Approximately two-thirds of the WIC fruit and vegetable choice are fresh fruit. Uh, banana and vegetable salad were the number one choice for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the participant regarding fruit and vegetable. Hispanic household and household with more participants prefer more like a fresh fruit and vegetable. And we found in Virginia, average fruit and vegetable redemption rate is about 72%, which is consistent with other states. Uh, black and the SNAP participants tend to have uh, lower redemption rates. Well, I, you may, you know, if you may not be satisfied with a quantitative analysis, and we agree because uh, there are some limitations of the administrative data. We don't have every possible variables in the uh, collected in the administrative data, and moreover, we don't know what what, are, what participants are thinking, how they make choices. So I'd like to give the mic uh, back to Chuan Yi, who will talk about the supplementary qualitative research. Okay, thank you, Harry. Uh, I think the quality, quantitative uh, data analysis provides us very insightful and also interesting findings. So right now, I think all of us have some idea about exactly what kind of food vegetable and how much food vegetable have been redeemed by the uh, big participants. But however, one limitation of the quantita quantitative uh, data-driven analysis is that it cannot tell us why. So therefore, we conducted one uh, supplementary qualitative research. So we're trying to further explore why this is happening. In our interviews, uh, we covered a number of topics. Uh, today, I will only focus on two most relevant questions. First question is that what the factors influence weak participants, fruits and vegetable purchases. The second question is that why many weak participants do not fully redeem their fruits and vegetable benefits? In our qualitative research, so we conducted a, a, a number of focus groups and also in-depth interviews. Uh, we used a vivo a qualitative data analysis software to analyze the interview data. This table uh, shows our data collection efforts. Basically, we uh, conducted uh, several in-depth interviews and also focus groups in three cities in Virginia. The first question we explore is what factors influence weak participants' fruits and vegetable purchases? No surprise, the most frequently mentioned factor is the economic factor. So basically, it means the price or affordability. So it means that many weak participants, when they buy fruits and vegetables, they have some financial constraints. And also, price is a major consideration in their purchases. The second factor is quality, uh, mainly freshness. And also, the third factor is nutrition. So here we put some uh, uh, quotes from the uh, from the interviews. So basically, they are very straightforward. So uh, let's move on. The next, uh, I think, very unique factors uh, we identified is that the children's uh, or kids' preference 
they play a very important role in their families' fruits and vegetable buying decisions. <laughs> for example, from the coast, we can see uh, if the kids like certain kind of vegetable, for example, broccoli, the family are more likely to buy the vegetables. <laughs> and another very important factor we uh, identified is the time. So in our interviews, uh, several interview participants said that as a mom, <coughs> they were very busy. So basically, time is very important to them. So for example, some of them, they, buy a lot of, they bought a lot of canned food. For example, in the last uh, code, we can see these participants, they bought 70 to 80% of canned food each month. So basically, because the canned food is easy to, to cook and save their time. So all those are the major factors we identified uh, that influence weak participants, uh, fruits and vegetable buying. Related to this question, we also identified one very unique characteristic of those under-redeemed weak participants. So we found that many under-redeemed weak participants, so they make unplanned shopping trips, and also they went to store multi-time each week. So if we look at the quotes from the uh, interviews, we can see that it seems that their shopping trips are very impulsive. So it seems that they didn't do much planning before they go shopping, so which is very different from the typical consumer. The next question uh, is very important that we focus on is that why many weak participants, they do not fully redeem their uh, fruits available benefits. According to our interview, uh, consumers, their unpleasant store experience in their redemption, in their buying, buying process, so it's a major barrier leading to the under-redemption. If you look at the first quote, so some participants, they indicated that some stores, they didn't mark the, the big approved product very clearly. Sometimes they had some difficulty to identify or locate the products. More interesting, if you look at the second one, so we all know that uh, all the fresh fruits and vegetables, they are eligible for weak redemption. However, in our interviews, uh, several our participants, they indicated that when they check out some weak, uh, some weak eligible fre fresh food and vegetable products, they got denied. So that's a question, right? And also, if you look at the third one, more interestingly, we can see the denial of the situation is inconsistent across different stores and also over time. It means that you may can redeem one item in one store. Maybe you, you, get, you get denied in another store. And also, you may get uh, redeemed one item in this store today. Maybe you get denied for the same product and also at the same store, maybe a couple of days later. So although this, this is a kind of quality of study and also we have a very small sample, we don't know how prevalent this problem is but it seems a very important uh, uh, problem in this system. So therefore, we conducted some further analysis. Uh, we talked to the Virginia Week agency, we talked to the store manager, and also we asked about the participants. So here what we found. So basically, whether when eligible fruits and vegetable uh, items will be denied or not, it depends on whether the UPC or PLU code of the product is on the weak approved product list or not, or we call it APL or not. So if the, if the code is on the list, so the product will pass through the checkout point. If not, this item will be denied. So in order to have one product code in the, on the list, first, the retail corporation, they need to submit the code to the WIC system. At the same time, the WIC agency, they needed to approve and also add the item to the WIC system. So by doing that, so this product will be on the list, they will be qualified. But however, the complicated thing is that we know that uh, in order to help the retail corporation to submit the code to the WIC system, the individual local store managers, they need to submit the code to the corporate level. We know that the different local uh, retail stores, they may have different uh, suppliers. They may carry different uh, fruits available items. And also, they may use different PLU code. 
So therefore, in the information exchange, the SIS process, there may have some error or overlooking happening. And also, this system is needed to be updated every day on a daily basis. So sometimes it has to be done manually. So you can see some problem, if any problem happens in the process, so one eligible item might be get denied. But this is, is not the end of the world. So there's one thing a uh, retail store can do to address the problem. So if the store cashier, if they know the situation, so they can use, uh, as Harry talked about, the wildcard code, for example, 4469. So if they put in the number, so they can over override the system denial, so consumer can get the product. But however, this depends on whether the retail store cashier, they have received the training or not. If they don't know that, the uh, eligible product will get denied. So that's caused a lot of problem for those uh, weak participants. So this, uh, this figure shows you basically, so what the, how the system is working and also what the sources for the, we can make it call it the false deny of the eligible weak products. In addition to the store factors, uh, we also found that weak participants, individual factors, they also contributed to the uh, end redemption. The first factor is that we found that some weak participants, they tended to forget to certify or redeem their week, weekly uh, monthly uh, benefits. You can see the code from the code here that sometimes they forget. And also related to the first factor, uh, some weak participants, they perceive only a marginal, marginal value of the weak benefits. So they do not care too much about the weak benefits because they may have the SNAP, which have much bigger value. And also uh, some weak participants, they do not have, uh, especially for those, if you look at the code, especially for those new participants, they may not have adequate knowledge or competence to use the EBT card to redeem the fresh food, fruits and vegetables. And also if you look at the second codes, some of them, they may do not know how to cook vegetables, so therefore they do not buy many uh, vegetables. And also personal, prefer, uh, prefer, uh, personal needs and also preference also play a role. So some people, they, some participants, they do, not, they, they do not buy the fruits and vegetables just because they don't like it. And also a couple of uh, participants, they indicated that they, don't, they didn't have a car, so they couldn't certify and also to redeem their benefits on time. So that's are the, all the major factors we identified from our qualitative uh, research. Both our, our qualitative and quantitative uh, research provide some Im implications regarding how to improve fruits, vegetables, redemption. Uh, we have, uh, because of the time limits, today I will only focus on three uh, strategies we identified. The first one, we focus on the weak participants. Because from the study, we know that one major factor is that some weak participants, they tend to forget to redeem their benefits. So we think that a timely reminder might be helpful. So actually, uh, right now we are conducting one research. We're trying to investigate how can we use text message to improve their redemption rate. So for example, we are studying, so how do we design the text message? Or what's the best time to send the message to achieve the best result? The second strategy uh, is to focus on the store. Because we know that the unpleasant, the redemption experience in store is a major barrier. So basically the store manager may can do, maybe they can do something, for example, uh, they can better mark their big approved products and also they can better present the product so consumer can easily identify the uh, weak approved product. The second is that they can provide better training to those cashiers. So we know that most of the uh, retail cashiers, they are part-time part employees. So still they may need to provide more training on them regarding the weak, benef weak benefits. So at least they need to know that they can use the wildcard code, for example, 4469, to override the system, system deny then they can provide a better experience to the weak participants. The last one is very important. So the weak program, they may need to work closely with the uh, retail stores. They can better integrate and also to streamline the information exchange. 
By doing that, they can reduce the false system denial, and also they can provide a better experience for the weak participants. So uh, because uh, Harry uh, did a lot of effort, put a lot of efforts, and also did a lot of co uh, coordination in this project, uh, I will uh, turn the mic to uh, Harry. Harry, do you have more to see? Oh yes, can you go to the next slide? Okay, we feel very fortunate uh, that we have a wonderful team to work with us on this small pilot project. We have known many wonderful people who voluntarily help us to understand the WIC program operation, to navigate the very complicated WIC system, and hopefully to improve the WIC you know, ultimately through our efforts. Well, the first group of people we'd like to thank for is the state WIC agency in Virginia, led by Dr. Michael Welch, Virginia WIC director. With his excellent leadership, we almost kind of mobilized half of the state agency to work on this project. Uh, these wonderful people really want to work, uh, WIC work in a more efficient, effective, and friendly way. But the clinic managers are really the boots on the ground, and they did extraordinary work to recruit the participants, arrange an interview, and assist them you know, in any way they can. I still remember Lisa Anderson, you know, who is uh, the manager, the clinic manager in Virginia Beach, okay, for over two decades. She, when I entered the, the clinic, I saw her standing at the entrance door and personally greeted every participant coming to our study, which really made the difference. And also, I'd like to thank our ODU team who worked very hard in the last few months to recruit the participants, analyze millions of records, but almost, you know, kind of um, work like uh, with very little uh, budget effort covered. Um, moreover, I'd like to thank our colleagues at USDA and the Becker Center who are extremely supportive to our work. Uh, Betsy is always available, you know, almost at any time for technical questions on the WIC program, even after she retired from the USDA. Okay, David and Joanne always send us immediately any information available to help the project and also, you know, if for additional, uh, Patrick identify additional resources and help uh, provide advice on the manuscripts. And Alice Emmerman, uh, she's wonderful, super nice, and I often exchange emails with her at midnight, you know, to, to solicit with them, and she replied to my email in a few minutes. And Matt and Terry from the Back Center even personally visit our town to see how we can do you know, more interesting research in the future. So I've been doing research uh, mostly on where, uh, SNAP or, or uh, kind of OBT for over 15 years. But it's my first time to be really overwhelmed to receive so many selfless kind of support from so many colleagues. I really appreciate their efforts. And this is just like as the old saying goes, a picture is worth of 1,000 words. And I have collected quite a few pictures to, to record the, the wonderful week moments on the, the, the journey. And so glad to share this moment with you. And we are confident that we can do better work with this wonderful people support. So the last two words I want to say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.